briefly uh, tell us a little bit about your laboratory and the situation and the work that you do there. Yes, uh, I am a, a researcher at the University of Illinois at Chicago in the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences. Uh, I've been there through much of my career, uh, and my focus over the years has been in the area of retinal neuroscience. Uh, we have focused our interests on the electrophysiology of the photoreceptor cells of the retina and how these, they signal to other cells of the retina on the biochemical processes that mediate those uh, signaling activities of the photoreceptors, and in particular studies by which we can understand how conditions of light and darkness influence the sensitivity of the retinal cells. In recent years, uh, we've been very excited uh, tuning our attention to uh, translationally, uh, more translationally applicable areas, and with colleagues uh, in several projects working at the level of fundamental science, but with what we hope will be a good bridge to clinical uh, new therapies for retinal disease. Tell us a little bit about the major thrust of your current project. Yes. Well, one of our main areas of interest right now is a new technology that with my close collaborators, my close colleagues, are working to develop in which we hope will lead ultimately to a potential new type of therapy for advanced stages of photoreceptor degenerative disease like age-related macular degeneration and others where the rod and cone photoreceptors are deteriorating or already uh, dying. Uh, what we are doing is to develop a technology in which a light-sensitive molecular structure can be interfaced with nerve cells to make them activatable, excitable, and able to signal in response to light. Uh, I should emphasize right here that this is a very close, a very exciting collaboration in which I've been working with Professor Francisco Bezania and his colleagues at University of Chicago. Um, this arose from an overlap of our interest, mine in the retina and his. He's a very prominent uh, biophysicist and interested in the mechanisms by which channel proteins, important components of nerve cells, fire action potentials, which are the electrical signals by which many nerve cells communicate with one another. In this work, uh, as I said, uh, we're interested ultimately in developing this as a potential new therapy for degenerations in which the rods and cones are no longer functioning. In the healthy retina, of course, signals, visual signals that are initiated in the rods and cones are processed within the retina and ultimately travel to the ganglion cells of the retina, which, which we can consider as the output cells of the retina that send processes back to the brain and through electrical signals termed action potentials, communicate uh, visual signals uh, to the brain for further processing. Our notion is that under conditions in which the photoreceptors themselves, the rods and cones that ordinarily receive light and, and initiate the signaling, are no longer working, that we can bypass that breakdown in the system and attempt to make the ganglion cells of the retina, the cells that fire these action potential signals back to the brain, directly sensitive to light that enters the eye. The the approach that we're using is a, a one that to us is very exciting and we think holds a considerable uh, potential. It's based on the use of what we call gold nanoparticles as a light absorbing uh, molecular or somewhat larger than molecular size structure. Nanoparticles, of course, refer to the tiny, tiny dimension of these particles. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter, far, far uh, tinier than the width of a human hair, for example, and only somewhat larger than conventional uh, biomolecules that we all um, are studying. With the use of gold nanoparticles, what we have done is to take an approach in which we functionalize, that is, conjugate or join the gold nanoparticle, while my hand here can be the gold nanoparticle, with appropriate biomolecules that can target 
the nanoparticle to the target nerve cell of interest. And the idea is, through mechanisms that we are studying, uh, building on uh, a work from previous studies, enabling these gold nanoparticles to absorb light, and through a mechanism that to us is uh, one that we think we understand the outline of, to be able to induce the cell to which the nanoparticle is attached to initiate the action potential signaling. I should emphasize uh, that uh, this is at a very early stage of this uh, technology. We have not yet uh, worked uh, to develop the application of this to cells of the retina. That's a very next step on which we're focusing, but so far we've had very encouraging results with what one might term model excitable cells, for example, cells that we call dorsal root ganglion cells from our experimental animal, a widely studied easily isolated cell type that's known to fire these action potential signals. We've done experiments interfacing our gold nanoparticle preparations with these cells and also with brain slices obtained from our experimental animals using appropriate techniques for light stimulating and recording the activity. And what we are finding is um, to us very exciting indicating that one can obtain a robust, a very pronounced ability of these cells that are not ordinarily sensitive to light to become sensitive to light with this type of treatment. I might say at this point uh, that a field perhaps known to many of your uh, audience uh, and which is a very powerful technique that has been developed over this past decade is that of optogenetics. Optogenetics is a very exciting and very powerful technique that involves the genetic engineering of the nerve cell or other cell type of interest to incorporate by genetic engineering and express uh, typically a microbial light sensitive protein so that the cell having been engineered to now be expressing this light sensitive biomolecule can be illuminated and induced to uh, be active in fire signaling. Our approach is again light sensitive but quite distinct from optogenetics. Optogenetics as I said is a very exciting and powerful technique but does of course require the genetic engineering of the uh, cell of interest. Uh, what we are doing is seeking an approach in which a direct delivery of our gold nanoparticle complex to the cells, ultimately uh, to retinal cells, to ganglion cells of the retina in the living eye, can induce those cells to become directly light sensitive without the need for the, uh, the genetic engineering. How do you hope to deliver this particular approach? Yes. In the cells that we've studied so far, and all of our experiments to date have been in vitro, that is in suitable recording chambers um, uh, where uh, the cells can be studied, um, what we have done is to deliver our preparations to the cells uh, merely by introducing them into the surrounding medium and, um, and allowing their targeting biomolecules, antibodies or related molecules that are directed against specific known proteins of the cell surface of the target cell to enable those particles to attach to the cells and become active. In a vision application, what we imagine is that a similar type of preparation suitably designed for interfacing with the ganglion cells of the retina can be introduced intravitreally, much as uh, many drugs in routine clinical ophthalmology are introduced into the vitreous of the eye by the doc and can, by diffusion and attachment to their target cells, do their job upon uh, the appropriate targeting. As you know, targeting is a challenge with a lot of drugs. How do you hope to ensure that you don't have off-target effects? Yes, that's an important question, one of many challenges for sure that we will uh, have to address. The idea, uh, the principle of the idea is to make use of the fact that ganglion cells as well as many other cell types 
uh, which express many biomolecules on their cell surface, frequently have selective, uh, perhaps unique is too strong a term, but molecules that can be seen from a uh, complex that's coming in from the extracellular medium to identify that, yes, this is the cell where I would like to sit down and reside. So in the case of ganglion cells, there are known markers, as we call them, cell surface markers, that we hope to exploit in the application to those retinal ganglion cells. In experiments that uh, we have been already doing and have had good success is targeting known cell surface markers of the cell type that we are studying in vitro in our current experiments. The concept uh, uh, involves as the targeting biomolecule an antibody or perhaps down the road uh, uh, another, uh, other types of molecules that can interface, bind to those cell surface markers. And it is already important in our experiments and certainly will be that these are cell surface markers that are in the vicinity of a particular protein expressed by the target cell. Uh, 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 proteins that are termed voltage-gated ion channels. Voltage-gated ion channels that are specifically voltage-gated sodium channels are the channel types or the protein types that in many, many neuron types are the proteins that upon sensing a change in the electrical microenvironment initiate this action potential signaling. In the healthy, ordinarily in the healthy system, the voltage-gated sodium channels are brought to activation by synaptic input, communication from other neurons that change the electrical properties of the cells, what we call a depolarization, that is sensed by the protein, and in response to that depolarization, that protein undergoes a shape change that allows the initiation of the action potential signals. In our case, we are making use of the light absorbing properties of the gold nanoparticle to take the absorbed light energy from a very brief pulse of light and to re-radiate or dissipate as a very tiny, non-damaging, very localized pulse of heat to the surrounding membrane that is in the vicinity of the sodium channels. Now, this gets uh, quickly into the uh, details of the biophysics at work, but a very um, exciting mechanism that we think nicely accounts for our experimental data is a process in which that light absorbed energy that's re-radiated as a tiny, very quick, non-damaging pulse of heat to the local membrane in the vicinity of the sodium channels changes very quickly and comes and goes very quickly, a change in an electrical property of the cell membrane where the sodium channels reside. The technical term is capacitance. And what happens, we believe, is that that light energy re-radiated as heat and changing the capacitance, the electrical property of the membrane, is sensed by those voltage-gated sodium channels and causes them to open uh, uh, mimicking uh, the depolarization that in the healthy system the cell would ordinarily receive. That is the process that we think is at work. We have much to learn about the details of it, but it nicely accounts for both our own work and studies that have come before. And as such, we anticipate that it will be important for an ultimate vision application to have a similar process in which extremely rapid and tiny changes in that electrical property are causing the sodium channels to open. Are you able to correlate these in animal models with, for example, using electrophysiological studies? Well, certainly the wealth of information on the electrophysiology not only of ganglion cells but the cells that we've currently been studying is the foundation uh, that any uh, 
next work uh, uh, depends on. And our ability to record the technical procedures of what we call whole cell recording, or in the case of our brain slices, an all optical method where we use a particular dye to sense the firing of action potentials. All of this builds tremendously on work that has come before to both develop the technical procedures, to develop the concepts. Uh, this is uh, uh, perhaps, uh, if I can say as a general comment, the excitement of research science uh, uh, because here we are learn g gathering new information and progressing the knowledge and in particular knowledge that we think and hope will have a direct benefit for disease therapy. That leads me to the next question. If you're a patient listening to this, how would you phrase it in a simpler language in terms of the potential translational implications down the road? Well, I think I mentioned a, a few minutes ago that we anticipate that this kind of approach, if successful in the living eye, and we have ideas uh, and uh, encouragement already uh, from our work done so far, could become a new type of therapy in the advanced stages of diseases like age-related macular degeneration. It's in those advanced stages where, as I mentioned before, the natural mechanisms by which light is sensed and communicated to the rest of the nervous system has broken down. And a therapy that could, as I was saying, bypass that broken link in the chain of visual information processing and make the output cells that go back to the brain, the ganglion cells sensitive to light, could we hope mimic or approach at least certain aspects of normal vision. The normal visual process, as we know, is such an exquisite and complex uh, network of interactions among cells that realistically uh, 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 we think we will be, we will have considered this approach a success if we can begin to approach certain features of the natural, fully healthy system uh, and uh, like other investigators using similar or of a very different methods to restore vision, this is such an urgent challenge uh, with uh, uh, the application uh, just adds to the passion of the work. How do we measure whether or not the visual cortex itself is going to interpret these signals that are coming from a different origin yes. in a way that comes together as vision? Yes, that's a, 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 very, a very central question. Among the multiple challenges that a technique like this uh, will have to surmount is the fact that uh, let's uh, let's uh, uh, imagine that we have been successful in making those output neurons of the retina sensitive to light. The native, the natural system in which photoreceptors generate visual signals within the retina, we know from a great deal of, of work, are processed in many very elegant and complex ways, even within the retina, before those messages go to the ganglion cells and then go, messages go back to the brain. Now, if we have successfully bypassed the broken down photoreceptors and made the ganglion cells sensitive to light, one now has to ask the question, how do you make the next stages of the visual system back in the brain understand the fact that the cells are, yes, now light sensitive, but the way that they fire their action potentials, the way they send their messages, will have to approach or mimic the way that they send their messages in the normal system. We anticipate uh, we anticipate that uh, success in this method will include not only the treatment of the retina, but a head-mounted device, a goggle-like device, that projects microbeams of light from a visual scene back onto the treated retina. And to address your question, it will be important for that goggle-like device not only to uh, so to speak, see the scene and then direct the light down onto the retina, but to modify in important ways the timing and the spatial properties of that scene in a way that compensates for the fact that we are now addressing 
light-sensitive cells that are no longer the photoreceptors themselves, but this downstream link. We'll have to, to put it in a phrase, learn, or I should say better learn, because um, there's important work going on in this area already, better learn the language, as we say, by which the ganglion cells communicate their action potential signals to the brain so that that device can compensate and be tuned to a way that the ganglion cells, having been made light sensitive, can now communicate meaningfully to the brain. What are your anticipated milestones in this study? Well, I, uh, I think you're asking about our very next steps uh, in this work. And uh, we are just now at the stage of uh, the earliest stage of beginning to take this technique, take this approach, and apply it and test it to investigate it in cells of the retina, both in vitro, as we say, that is excised retinal tissue from our experimental animal, a mouse and rat, and in the living eye of the animals to begin with the delivery into the vitreous of the eye and through suitable electrophysiological and other types of tests to see if we are successfully making those ganglion cells light sensitive. The immediate uh, challenge uh, in, in a phrase is now to develop that work in the retina of our experimental animals and as very much uh, 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 very important components of that milestone next phase will be to uh, be improving and tuning the technology so that we can minimize the light energy delivered to the tissue for biocompatibility reasons to address an issue that will be important as well in terms of the accessibility, that is, optimizing the conditions, the biomolecules to which the gold nanoparticles are attached, that favor their ability to permeate uh, from the vitreous across a, um, a small uh, component that we term the inner limiting membrane of the retina and reach the ganglion cells to be able to interface with them. Excellent, Professor. This is fascinating and remarkable work. Well, we're very excited about it. and. Uh, uh, this, uh, again, I, I want to uh, uh, mention again uh, uh, Dr. Bezania, uh, Francisco Bezania, Pancho as his nickname, uh, 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 the collaboration that's uh, continuing as I've described very strongly and uh, we are both uh, excited uh, by the work and encouraged by what we've seen so far experimentally and hoping that we can uh, turn it into something that will have uh, ultimately a therapeutic value. Uh, that would be a, uh, we would be very gratified and we think and hope uh, others will be too if we're successful with this technology. Professor, thank you for this remarkable work and we will continue to follow it closely. Well, thank you. Thank you for your interest.